Hi, this is Paul Neal at Pen Productions. Uh, let's just take a look at connecting VS Code um, as our IDE to 3ds Max, so that we can uh, not have to code in this space here, uh, which is a, you know an OK editor. It allows some functionality, allows us to be able to do things. However, um, it uh, you know, it has a lot to be desired from a pure uh, full-blown code editor that allows us to do far, far more with our code. So this is great. I use this all the time, the script editor and Max for small things. And of course, the script listener as well for writing one-liners. But, you know, it gets to a point where I'm writing big tool sets and whatnot, and I need a proper uh, code editor that allows me to be able to function much quicker. So if I run this script that I've got, that I've just got saved off to my downloads folder, just for the hell of it, uh, control E, of course, evaluates the entire script and it runs. Now, if we go over to, um, uh, you know, uh, VS Code, I've got the same script loaded up here. And if I run it, you'll actually note, and it's the exact same hotkey I've got set up, control E, and it evaluates the entire script. So they are the same script if I uh, run them. So uh, update this um, and save it uh, and head back to Max. You'll notice that it's actually updated in Max. Now, uh, normally what you'd get is a, a message coming up saying, hey, do you want to reload this? I have uh, killed that coming up and just said, yeah, always just reload it. Uh, that's, uh, that's in one of the options uh, um, files. You can go in and find that and, uh, and just tell it to go ahead and always do it. So these, these are the same script. I'm running them in, in both things, and I can execute them in the same way. Now, uh, limitations of what we're about to do. If you just take a line in uh, MaxScript, for instance, and you want to run a line with Shift-Enter, or even just you know um, uh, highlighting a specific thing and going Shift-Enter, we won't be able to do that in VS Code. Okay, It's, gonna, it's not going to do anything at this point. Um, we, you know, we don't... There's no way to, that I know of anyways to set it up to be able to execute one line at a time. Um, so often I will actually have my code open in both. If for some reason I need to go in here and check individual commands or lines to see if they're doing what I want. Um, and, uh, and I'll come back to VS Code for the actual coding, coding part of it. Now, VS Code has got uh, uh, multiple things. We can set up projects and all sorts, and that's something we want to do when we're working so we can have all our scripts waiting to be opened. That's really handy. You know, so I have, um, you know, multiple uh, project files and whatnot that are uh, lined up, ready to go, and I can open up these. There's all my Mac scripts, for instance, that I currently have uh, just sitting on my drive that I work on. And so you can see it's, it's just easy now for me to be able to open individual things and drop them in. Um, you know, I even got uh, scripts from Gary Davis in here. How about that? Um, so, you know, I can... Uh, I can, uh, you know, easily access, um, you know, my code and whatnot and have that stored. So that's something that you can't do in Max easily. You know, search function, source control, you could be pushing it up to source control. Um, so down at the bottom here in extensions, you can install new extensions. Now, when you first launch uh, VS Code, it's not going to do color coding for Max. And that's, uh, that's a problem. Now, I've got two installed here, and I don't know that the second one's needed anymore, um, but uh, I have them both installed. This is the uh, Max script language pack. If you want to find one, you can just simply type in, you know, Max or 3ds Max, and uh, it'll do a search, and you can find these ones. So the Attila Bump one is the one that we're going to need uh, out of the gate here. So you can go ahead and install that on the system. Now, mine's already installed, so, you know, I don't need to uh, look for these. And uh, if I click on that, it'll tell me uh, the information on how to use it and, and how to get started using this. And uh, so this is going to do color coding for us. It's going to uh, color code everything, um, you know, which is going to be great. It's going to give us uh, code completion capabilities so that we can actually, you know, start typing a command that already exists. And it'll, it'll uh, you know, we can just hit enter when we're partway through typing it because, you know, a little window will pop up with it uh, in it. We can have that in Max as well. Um, and, uh, but again, you know, there's all kinds of other functionalities that uh, won't uh, work. Now, executing Max script, we need to go down right down to the bottom of this, and we'll find this Max script uh, PyCom 
uh, is what we need. So essentially what I have is this MaxScript PyCom.exe. It's sitting on the hard drive uh, waiting to be fired up. Uh, it's in the, you know, plug the um, uh, programs folder. And, you know, when uh, um, VS Code launches, it knows to go looking for it. It launches that um, executable at com and in max there's some configuration that has to happen uh, in your um, uh, in your windows configurations uh, settings and whatnot so let's go through all that i'm going to go to max pycom uh, by jeff Hanna. he's the one who wrote this and it comes up in the github here uh, so we can get the parts of it so there's a bunch of stuff one releases we want to go get releases and we want to go and download max pycom server so i'm going to grab this and just download it and just stick it in my downloads folder for now you can get uh, the source code and everything for it if you like i'm just going to go back and uh, we're going to now take a look at some more information here so here's the readme on max pycom the, the wiki page uh, you know if we uh, head on over to it um, we'll have a better understanding of how we need to do this. So installing MaxPyCom server. So it's basically saying, uh, take the MaxPyCom server zip file uh, archive. We're going to copy it, it the uh, executable file into C programs, um, MaxPyCom and into this location. So I have done that. Um, I have uh, under my C drive, under my program folders, um, I have the... Um, max pycom and i've left it defaulted into this location because it just makes my life easier you can put it anywhere um, but you know this makes sense because this is where they tell you to put it so there's the executable file that i need uh, right out of the gate and it's been placed in there so that came out of that zip package now we need the copy the initialized com server um, script and this initialized com server is going to go into your script startup folder so same thing if we go back and grab the um, uh, let's see the uh, downloads folder and if we take a look in here you'll notice that there's this initialized com server so we're going to copy that and we're going to uh, dump that down into 3ds max so back under program files again uh, autodesk uh, program you know the end of the version that you're working with again it could go into all of them I have it installed in all of them um, uh, to make sure that everything's you know functioning and everything's up to date and working um, I'm going to go down to scripts and start up and I'm going to copy and paste it in here then so for uh, the initialized com server if we take a look at that initialized com server and uh, I've got the MS files associated now with uh, MS code in Windows so that it opens MS code uh, right away you'll notice what it's doing it's doing a bunch of registry key entries uh, to be able to um, drop this information and in so that it's getting the max version and whatnot and it's a, it's setting up a reg key really I guess this only kind of needs to be done once I guess but it's running every time when max starts that's no it's no big deal I would I would think that it needs to run every time but they tell you to put it there so that's what I did so back to here again and so that one's done now configuring editors to be able to use it. So we want to go into the configure editors. Now you can use other editors for this if you like and do the exact same thing. So you can follow the instructions any of these others and it'll connect them too. So if you prefer using PyCharm or, or something like Notepad++, you can go ahead and do it. Or if you're running the full Visual Studio, I like Visual Studio Code, it's free. It's, uh, it's great for scripting uh, uh, functionality and whatnot. So what we want to do is we want to be able to set up a task and we want to be able to add this to our tasks in um, uh, in uh, in MS code. So uh, what it's doing is, is it's telling it to go in and run this executable here, this command. So this task is being run, um, you know, when it, it starts up. So it's it's all running and everything's up and uh, up and going. Right. So connecting it to it. So that's where we had placed it, if you remember, the uh, executable. So we're going to configure the task in terminal down to configure um, default tasks and uh, 
build release max script already marked in the a task so it looks like it's already in there but i'm just going to go ahead and open that up and so this tasks json file that we have and so this is a json file if you're not familiar with what a json file is um, it's uh, it's a format for uh, formatting uh, data and values and whatnot it is you know the same kind of idea of an xml file um, but it's just a different uh, setup and how it's done. You can look up JSON files on the web and you'll find massive amounts of information for it. So what I've done is I've copied and pasted that big bit of code down here to execute script in, in 3ds Max. And that is now created that task that's gonna be running. There's also this debug version you can get and I've got it running and be honest with you, I've never run it. Um, I just had it in there for some reason, but it's there as well. Uh, it looks identical, frankly. So I'm not sure what the difference was, but I put it in there because at some point they said, hey, put it in there. So it's been in there since. Um, so now that we've got that up and running, we can actually run it by executing, um, you know, and running a task. So I can say run task. So if we have that script back up, I'll go and open it again. I'll say open file and um, go to my downloads and grab that test MS again. We can go to terminal uh, run task or control alt R and then find it you can just do a search and it'll give you all the tasks and there's the execute script in in max so if i have max now available to me and i go to terminal run task and run that it's going to run that code for me and it's going to clear the listener and it's going to run that code so now what we want to do to make our lives easier instead of going through those steps we want to just be able to um, hotkey this so that we've got the same control E so we're not getting confused jumping between Max and here because before I hotkeyed it I was constantly going control E and wondering why nothing happened um, so we wanted that up and uh, running so we want to set up uh, I think I may have said snippets I'm not sure if I did or not uh, we want to step up uh, set up the code the key bindings so I'm going to search for those with control shift P and look up key bindings and open key bindings shortcut JSON file. So um, we can then open that up and it's going to give us all the key bindings that we've uh, set up for ourselves. Um, so these are ones that I have uh, running uh, currently in here. Um, you know, they're ones that I have set up for jumping between uh, tabs and all sorts um, and setting up bookmarks and all that kind of stuff. So you can set up your own key bindings. Now at the top here, I have this uh, key binding for running the task. So we're looking for uh, key binding here of control plus E. So that's my hotkey, the command. We're going to run this work bench action tasks run task. That's essentially the same as coming down here and saying run task. Okay. And then we need the name of the task that we're going to be running. And that was the idea that we went down and said run task. We could find that in the task we made and what did we call that task? And we're simply dropping it there. And now that task will run. So now I have the ability to just go control E and it's going to run that task for me. Uh, automatically and make sure that it is run. So I'll just uh, clear the listener here, uh, skip back, control E, and there it is running. So those are the steps basically to go through and connecting them together. And again, you can use any other code editor if you want, if you really want to uh, use one of the other ones. I really like VS Code. It's free, uh, open source. It's constantly being updated, has tons of plugins and add-ins for all kinds of different languages. Um, and it's very, very flexible in the way you can set it up with split screens and, and have them too wide or up above and below each other. You know, so there's a lot of uh, advantage using this over using the code editor in Max.